Good afternoon and welcome to the Admiral Markets Wall Street crossover show with our very own Craig Drake uh, uh, sitting in for a holiday um, bound uh, Darren Sinden, who's the market com commentator of Admiral Markets. Uh, how are you today, Craig? I'm well, I'm well. Right, uh, we're going to pretend that um, you are Darren, I suppose, in a sort of strange way. Uh, let's go into the uh, the data released over the European session. I mean, it's, it's easy to kind of get caught up in what's happening in Greece at the moment. Obviously, they've kind of been to and fro, but we've had a few kind of interesting numbers come out this morning. We had the second reading of French GDP, which is strong again. We've seen this rising corporate profit margins. We've seen strong household spending. So people kind of, when they look at the kind of mess politically that Europe's in at the moment, look at what's happening in Greece. You've actually seen quite a few interesting kind of stronger numbers creeping in there, up 0.6% in the quarter. But can, the, the can the President Hollande take the credit, or is this just a Mac, you know, ECB type thing going on there? Um, I think I think it's easy to get so hung up on what's happening at the ECB level, but we have, I think, you ignore what's actually happening in terms of business at your peril. I think you know, that, as loath as I am to say it, you know, we have seen some kind of some growth in the business sector. We have seen an increased business activity, even if they are starting from a lower level and they do have plenty of place to go from there. So it's ironic that the things might just get better just before the EU collapses. Yeah, people actually people actually having access to credit again, you actually start to see a bit of, you know, it has taken, it has cost a lot of money to get to this point, but you are seeing some some business activity. Um, out of the IFO numbers, what's well, the most that's, important? Well, the, I mean, the German numbers were, I mean, obviously they're, they're still strongly in, in growth territory above that 100 mark. Um, but they have weakened the, 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 um, the weakest levels in four months. Um, seen, uh, I think a, 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 the kind of business climate one is, is probably the biggest um, uh, source of concern. Uh, we've seen some weakening there, and I think that is. I think that's influenced by what's happening um, at, at the European level, which is kind of starting to cloud a, a few people's expectations. Right, and on the UK front, just the uh, the mortgage approvals, which pres presumably were. Uh, affected by uh, the general election. And well, we've had great mortgage approval. Um, we've had another strengthening, um, the highest level since March last year. I mean, at the current rates, why wouldn't you? You know, you know, the long the the Bank of England keeps delaying any hikes. Um, we've had this. We're, we're booming in the in the housing sector. People want to, If people can get access to credit, they want it right now because they don't want to miss that train. They don't want to miss the opportunity. Of, of, of getting into these low rates right now, and they don't want to see that house they want to buy go up by 20k over the next six months. So right, okay, let's go on to the uh, stock movers, the European stock movers. I mean, these are all we've seen a, a lot of moves based on what's happening in Greece, and what's happening in kind of global sentiment and risk aversion. The Nikkei um, rides strongly again, hit an, 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 a near 18, well above an 18 year high. Um, this is overnight optimism that Greece is going to sort itself out. And then it's kind of the kind of story about what happened overnight with this kind of this optimism above, you know, up 3% in the Nikkei. But then we looked at the stocks. The stocks kind of dumped everything the next, you know, over the session hours. That deal got rejected. Uh, we've seen the, 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 the um, four basis point move down in the, in the um, German band. There's people are kind of looking for safety right now. Um, and so that, that's, that's a big one. But in, in the kind of in M&A activity, uh, we had that um, boy shares dived after they rejected their Altice bid. Um, they cited a few execution risks and financing issues. The board unanimously rejected that bid, and so we saw a big, a big dive there in Boyd stocks. Okay, well, we'll see. That's uh, obviously a bit of a roller coaster at the moment. Uh, on to the um, M&A rumors and movers. Um, well, we saw that big move yesterday in Netflix. Um, they announced the plan for 71 stock split. Um, they're saying they want to um, make the stock more accessible to investors. Um, the stock rallied um, more than 0.9%. Um, so I suspect we're going to see further upside in Netflix today. Um, Lenar Corp are quite an interesting one to look at. The, the, they've had the single kind of biggest thing that's going to drive them is the upside in, in US new, new home sales. And we had that data out on Tuesday. Um, we're up at 546k. We had strong new home sales, and Lenar Corp. Are a, um, the best uh, what, five years was the yeah, best. Was yeah, yeah, exactly. Figure and Lenar Corp. Are a, um, a new home, single home builder in, based in, in Miami, in Florida, um, and that is, you know, it is those new home sales that are going to drive um, what's going on there. So I suspect we're going to see some strong, some strong numbers when we come from them. Um, Bed Bath and Beyond. They've had two quarters of, of weaker earnings, and. People are going to be, they're going to, they'll announce after the market closed today, but people are going to be looking to see that management have you know, started to pit, pull their socks up and started to sort things out there. So you may see if, you, we may start to see a bit of strengthening in, the, in their numbers after those, those weak results from the last half. 
Um, and finally, Boeing, uh, we saw that news of the departure of, um, of their um, chief operating officer, uh, so chief executive and replaced by the chief operating officer. So um, we may see a bit of, of upside there, depending how markets take that. Um, right, so, so hopefully not a sleeping giant yeah, uh, for too long. Yeah. All right, on to the uh, US data points. Uh, what caught your eye here? What catches your eye here? Um, well, we've got it's the final revision of, um, of US GDP. Um, if we see any kind of slight upside there, um, I mean, the, they saw the, the first reading saw a contraction of 0.7% last time round. Um, but expectations are for, uh, for a bit of a revision closer to minus 0.2%. So that kind of, any kind of strengthening of that US GDP number will see a strengthening. I mean, obviously, we'll see a strengthening of, of euro dollar. We'll see a bit of a strengthening there. Um, but also, we've got these um, personal consumption expenditures, which are expected to kind of roughly hold. Um, it, you, as we've, we've seen a bit of a weakening of US data, and that, that kind of slight concern when you look at the Fed, the Fed keeps talking about being increasingly data focused and increasingly data dependent. So the fact you, we want to start seeing the people, especially in this lower inflation environment, and where, you, where wage growth isn't necessarily as strong as you want to see, you want to see people going out and spending. Because in, in this kind of disinflation environment, people, the risk is not that consumption drops because people are deferring purchases. People don't think I'm going to wait until six months time to buy a fridge because it will decline by by half a percent in its price. People don't behave that way. The risk is that people defer purchases because they're feeling squeezed because of wages and an inflationary cycle. And so we're not quite in deflation in the US yet, but we want to start to see some strong numbers in that, in that expenditure. And you want to see people going out, buying things, and not deferring purchases. OK. Um, in terms of crude stocks, we're, we're going to see a slight slowdown in the deceleration there. Um, it fell um, 2.6 million barrels last time. Looking for a slowdown to, to um, to 1.8 million this time. Um, so just that's the kind of general trend we're expecting to see when those numbers are out later today. All right, then finally, the movers and levels. I mean, obviously, it's all about Greece here. And for, you know, it's unavoidable that you know, euro dollar, we see um, JPY, you see that kind of risk pair there getting driven by what's happening in, in Greece. And we had that deal you know, overnight, obviously, we saw, you know, we're going to see a reflection here of what we see in the stock market. We, we saw overnight, we had a bit of you know, misplaced optimism that somehow from somewhere today was going to be the day that Greece finally came up with a deal. Greece, finally, but obviously that got rejected. Um, and so any kind of sentiment in this market is almost entirely going to be driven by, by negotiations between, between Greece and, and its creditors. And so just a volatility yeah, mess, yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, any, any particular markets out of there that you lo you're looking at? Is, it, what's the, what, is the, the pound, you're quite sort of keen on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, the 160? I, yeah. I, I, I think we, longer term we're going to see a, a, a bit of a bullishness there, but obviously euro dollar is going to be the big play today. It, it's unavoidable that that's going to be driven entirely by what's happening in, in Brussels. You know, if we start to see any kind of concessions from Greece, and at the moment Greece is behaving like they, they hold all the cards. Greece is pretending like they're the ones in credit and loaning out to, to the ECB and to the IMF. You know, they, they still haven't got, quite got to this point where they're prepared to make concessions. And you see the rhetoric that's coming out of there. They're not prepared to, to make any real concessions. Um, and so until we see a bit of a softening of that stance, it's, it's incredible that we're still seeing this stance from them. That, 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 hard playing hardball. Yeah, it is, and uh, uh, you know, now doesn't f quite feel like the right time to play hardball with your creditors. Now feels like, you know, it, it does feel like we've been at the 11th hour for the last five years, but now may finally be the, I know, I know this is a kind of a broken record, but m now fi may finally be that, that 11th hour. But maybe it is time to swallow your pride and start to accept some of these changes. And that, that, that pair is entirely going to be driven by that. OK, well, that's it for the Wall Street, well, the Admiral Markets Wall Street crossover show. Thanks for, uh, to Craig Drake for standing in for uh, Darren Sinden. And uh, we'll be back with more at uh, the same time tomorrow.